It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Now, I'm giving you permission this morning. I'm giving you permission this morning. You can text. Uh, if you know some married folks, you can text them right now. Text them right now. Uh, tell them to tune in to www.brownbaptist.org. And uh, tell, them, tell them start streaming online. Amen. Send out a hashtag tweet, whatever that stuff is, Instagram. Amen. And tell folks to tune in. They might still have time to hit 1145. Uh, but we got a message today as we continue our walk through 1 Corinthians chapter 7 for married folks especially this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 through 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 through 16. Amen. And when you shall have found that, come on, stand with us. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verses 1 through 16. These words are recorded therein. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife. And let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her. And likewise, also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have the authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But I say this as a concession, not as a commandment, for I wish that all men were even as I myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner, another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Now to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. A wife is not to depart from her husband, but even if she depart, does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And the husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest, I, not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. But if she... If the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? Amen. I, um, I talked to Pastor, my good buddy, Dr. John Wallace, yesterday. And he said, what you going to preach? I said, I'm preaching about marriage. He said, I'm preaching about marriage, too. I said, what's your subject? He told me his subject. I said, that's a good enough subject for me. And so um, today we're, we're talking about it's worth the sacrifice. It's worth the sacrifice. Amen. So if you run across a shallow member and, and they say that uh, they pass a priest on a similar subject, you know where I got mine from. It's worth the sacrifice. Marriage works, but it requires work. Marriage works, but it requires work. That's what I want to hang my hat on. Y'all write that down. Marriage works, but it requires work. You see, from church to crib, the Corinthian have had issues. I mean, they had trouble in God's house, and now Paul is going to address troubling issues in their own house. They were confused about the necessity of marriage, whether they should marry or not marry. They were confused about the needs in marriage, how in the world to have a happy home. And they were also confused about the responsibilities regardless of marriage, whether uh, what kind of commitment is required of us, whether we are single or married. And so today, brothers and sisters, to the married folks, this is what I want to deal with, what Paul dealt with in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 16, to the married folks, he is letting us know marriage works, but it requires work. 
And three things I want to lift up this morning from these first 16 verses. I don't know why, uh, but I was in a rhyming mood when I came up with my points. And so my points are going to all rhyme this morning. Sometimes you, you need rhyming, I mean, to make the marriage, uh, you know, to, uh, to kind of keep on going. I mean, the river is wide. I can't step it. I'm in love with you, and I just can't help it. You, you know, uh, sometimes you, you need to come up with some rhymes every now and then. And so, uh, married folks, married folks, all those who are married, raise your hand. I want to see who I'm talking to. I want to see who I'm talking to. Ooh, a lot of y'all married. Amen. You left home. You were still married. Amen. All right. <laughs> Now, here's the only thing that I ask in a, in a message like today. In a message like today, uh, uh, first of all, married folk, y'all keep your eyes looking this way. That's, that's rule number one. Here's the other thing that I ask married folks, married folk, don't do the. Don't, don't, you know, if, if I hit a point that you feel like they really need to hear it, don't, don't go. And, and, and I said that last service, somebody who came through the line, they said, Pastor, you need to add one more rule, and that is don't do the foot stuff as well, because he was kicking me all during the service. So. No elbow, no kicking, you know, keep hands to yourself, eyes up here. But I want to give you three statements this morning. Here's the first one. Here's the first one. Satisfy the need in order to succeed satisfy the need in order to succeed. And this is verses 1 through 9. Satisfy the need in order to succeed. Look, brothers and sisters, we were created with needs. God designed us with desire and produced with uh, us with passions. And then he instituted marriage so that those fires can burn and bring warmth. And when the Bible talks about a fire burning, like in verse 9, y'all, he's talking about sexual desires. And, and so we were created with desires and, and with passions. Now, if the fire can't be controlled in the single state, then let the fire be contained in the married state. If the fire can't be controlled in the single state, that's why he says in verse 8 and 9, look, I'm saying to the unmarried, to the widow, it's good that you remain as I am. Many believe Paul is single at this time, either because of never being married or because he was married and his wife died. And Paul said, it's good not to remain as I am, but if you can't control yourself. In practice, self-control, he says what? Let them marry because it's better to marry than to them to burn so if the fire can't be controlled in the single state it ought to be contained in the married state and so if you're married guess what our motto ought to be that's why he says in verse two through five look because to avoid sexual immorality let everybody have their own wife and let every wife have their own husband and let the husband render to his wife well I like that the affection due to her and likewise, the wife to her husband, and, and don't deprive one another. And so he says that in the marriage state, the fires ought to be able to be contained and burned. You know what our motto ought to be as married folks? Burn, baby, burn. That's what our motto ought to be. Now, now here is the problem that was happening in the Corinthian church. The married folks wanted to live like single folks and to be celibate in their marriage once a month, once a quarter, once a year. <laughs> Paul said, are you crazy? He says there, verse 5, do not deprive one another. He said, all the time, fires ought not be burning. He said, let me give you those times if you're married. Now, this is if you're married. Uh, the only time fires ought not be burning is for, first of all, by consent. For a limited time. And you're giving yourself to fasting and praying. And you're coming back together so that Satan won't what? Tempt you because of your lack of self-control. 
And so, brothers and sisters, if, if, it's been, if it's been a week, if it's been two weeks, if it's been a month, you know you ain't been praying and fasting that long. You would have done lost 50 pounds if you've been doing all that, pr praying and fasting. And so he's saying, look, he is saying, make sure that you satisfy the need. Don't deprive and hold back one another. There's a scripture. There's a scripture. I love this verse. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 7 says that the full soul loathe a honeycomb. Well, when you're full, even when the honey struck by with a miniskirt, you say, oh, no, no. I'm full. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Brothers and sisters, you ought to satisfy the need in order to succeed. Look, you ought to keep them too full to want and too tired to look. <laughs> and, 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 and so he says, render, is that in your Bible? Render to your mate what is due them. Here's the point I want, I'm trying to make with this one right here, y'all. And that is you ought to give without them begging. You ought to give without them begging. You ought to give without them begging. I like what Dr. John Wallace said. God created us to feed them and not to fight them. And so satisfy the need in order to succeed. Here, 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 here's what uh, uh, Willard Harley, he wrote a book once. He wrote a book. It was called His Needs, Her Needs, How to Build an Affair-Proof Marriage. He, he said there are five basic needs of a man. Top five needs of a man, Willard Harley said, is sex, recreational companionship, an attractive spouse, domestic support, and admiration. He, he, he said, women, you would do well to meet those five needs in your man. Sex, recreational companionship, an attractive spouse, domestic support, admiration. He, he said, top five needs of a woman is affection, uh, uh, conversation, openness, honesty. He said, family commitment, and then financial support. She wants your money. <laughs> now, now, when you look at those two lists, guess what? They are two totally different lists. And so when we're going to satisfy need, it's so important that we know the needs of our mates. Now, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he's only dealing with just one of those particular needs. This fella I list about five for the man and five for the woman. Well, I go a little bit better than that. Look, I came up with what I call a must-have, can't-stand list. Must-have, can't-stand list. Must-have, can't-stand list. Matter, matter, matter of fact, this is going to be on the website tomorrow. You can go under resources, and, and, and you'll be able to print this down. And this is what I encourage couples to do, so that you can know what it is the needs of your mate, mate, write it down. Do this must have, can't stand, must have. Uh, what are the top five, seven things you must have? Top five, seven things. This ain't, ain't one, no, this is not a 101 thing. It's top five or seven. It might be from that list. It might be from some other thing. Must have. You might say, I must have a romantic husband. So in the first column there, you just write that down. Right here, you write it down. Must have romantic husband. Now, in my next column, I ask the couples to grade your spouse. Must have romantic husband. You might give him, well, I give him a two. <laughs> Scale of one and ten. Give him a two because Johnny just ain't romantic. He just ain't romantic. And, 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 and then, but, but here, here's the key. Here's the key. On the third column, I say suggestions. What do you want Johnny to do? Well, I'd like Johnny to bring me flowers more. Johnny, I, I, I want you to hug me more, or I want you to rub my feet. And you give some suggestions. You see what I'm talking about? List it, grade them, and then you give them suggestions. Now, over here on the, second, on the other side, you do the can't stand. Here, what are the top five to seven negative stuff that you know that you always said, well, I can't live this way. I would never live this way. Well, you might say on your can't stand, and, and you're going to do this for, for, for both of them. You might say, I can't stand a nagging wife. That might be one of your top five, Sam. I can't stand a nagging 
black and white. Now, brothers, if that's one of your can't stand, I got good news for you. You're in good company. Because even the wise man in Proverbs says, look, I can't stand a nagging wife. Matter, matter, matter of fact, the proverb, he, he quoted it twice. And if you know any time the Bible repeats something, that's some serious business. He said it's better to live on the rooftop over in a corner while it's raining and lightning and thundering than in a wide house with an egg and woman. I left out in the winter. <laughs> and so you might say, I can't stand a nagging wife. Well, well, grade her. I give her an eight, Pastor. Because she nag all the time. She wake up in the morning. Did you take trash out? I told you to take trash out. No trash can's almost full. Why you wait till the trash can get full? Why don't you just go on and take trash out when it's halfway full? My mama told me, never marry a man that won't take the trash out. She was right about you all the time. You just ought to take the trash out. And she just nagged me all the time. Now, see, on the negative side, you don't want no high school over there, you know. So here's what you do. You give her a suggestion. What, what, what about three things you would like for her to do? Tell me something one time. And that's it. <laughs> put, that, put that suggestion down. Another suggestion might be close your lips. Another suggestion might be, can I have one meal in peace? <laughs> I'm just throwing this one in. Another suggestion might be, and hey, can I have one sentence without your mama being in it? <laughs> <laughs> and so, look, now, now, now here's what you do. Here's what you do. When you fill out this need, when you fill out this need, now, this becomes then a written expectation of what my expectations are. Because somebody has rightly said, disappointment is unmet expectation. If you're expecting this, but you're getting down here, you're going to be disappointed. And brothers and sisters, here's a problem. Here's a bad thing. Y'all, and it's so sad, instead of communicating what the needs are. Here I know what my needs are. We've been together this long. He thought they mean high school. Here I know what my needs are. And we assume that somebody knows what I need. And, and let me just go with this. I haven't gone this, down this road in any of the other ones. Y'all special, but I'm going to go down this road. This is why it's so easy for affairs to get started. You won't tell your mate what your need is. But you'll go to work. Look all sad. What's wrong? Uh, They, he, he just take me for granted. He just take, he, he don't appreciate me. He, he won't even just do the nice, the, just the little thing. Only thing I ask is just, just a card. And he won't just do, give me that. Next day you come to work. Card on your desk. Oh, you just so understand. They don't understand. You told them. Go home. Say, here, fill this out. <laughs> Expectation. I, I was driving. They, they were driving me down the baseball last night. I like what Prophet Bowen said. Prophet Bowen put it like this. A closed mouth won't be fed. Look, you want somebody to know, tell them. So give without them begging. Now, I know one other something. I know one other something. I know, I know, I know what you hear. I know what you're saying. 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 I would satisfy the need. But I'd just be tired. <laughs> I have headaches. And... <laughs> how, how, how many have had children? 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 All right, Val and I have had four. Look, look. Now, you, you, you have a baby, you take them home. Baby have needs. What are you supposed to do as a parent? 
satisfy those needs. Diaper need change, and guess what? You change the diaper. Now, I bet, I can't say bet, I'm sorry. Don't, don't, I, I, I didn't say bet, didn't say bet. You Baptist folk gambling too much already. I didn't say bet, didn't say bet. I guarantee, I guarantee that some of y'all changed some diapers when you were tired. Some of y'all changed the diaper when you had a headache. Some of you changed the diaper when you had been at work all day long and you were stressed and, and, and you were just frustrated. But when the diaper needed to be changed, guess what you did? You changed the diaper. As a matter of fact, if, if they did it like my boy, sometime while you were yet changing the diaper, they would mess again. And guess what? Smile while they mess. But you wouldn't just leave them that way. No, you will meet the need and change it again. Satisfy the need in order to succeed. Satisfy the need in order to succeed. Let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. Uh, give without them begging. Let me just throw this in. Because, look, anytime there's a need, if somebody got to beg for the need, it ceases to be a gift. And it becomes a duty. And so Paul says, render to them what is due them. Here's, a second, here's my second statement. Don't leave. They just might believe. Don't leave. They just might believe. Verses 10 through 14. Verses 10 through 14. Paul says, now look, um, y'all know this. The Lord has commanded a wife is not to di divorce her husband. The husband is not to divorce his wife. Why? Because although God allowed for divorce, the original plan was a lifetime commitment. The truth of the matter is, Malachi 2.16, God hates divorce. And Paul said, married folks, don't leave. Married folks, don't leave. It's sad, brothers and sisters, over half of our marriages end in divorce. In the African-American community, even among folks that go to church, sometimes it's 70% end in divorce. Don't leave. Don't leave. Now, I know what somebody said. The grass looks greener on the other side. Let me give you a statement. Let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Greener grass always and only happens with a maintenance agreement. That went over somebody here. Let me say it one more time. Greener grass always and only happens with a maintenance agreement. You see some green grass? I guarantee you, somebody got a maintenance agreement. Somebody spraying, somebody fertilizing, somebody cutting, somebody is paying somebody to water it. Now the time and energy for something new can be used to spruce up the existing. So you don't have to leave, brothers and sisters. I, 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 I love that, that show, Love It or List It, where they go into a house and they take a house where folks have been living and, 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 and they are rearranged and knock out some things and build some other things, and then they bring the folks back into the same old house. Sometimes it's like, wow, whoa, this is where we were living they say, you ain't got to leave it. Just love it. Stay where you are. Save yourself some money. Val, Val, Valerie, Valerie did some work on the outside of our house, a house this year, and, and, and she spruced up the house side of the house. Somebody was looking for a house one day. was lost. They said, I can't find your house. <laughs> Same house, but it's been spruced up. What am I trying to say, brothers and sisters? You don't have to leave. Spruce up what you got. Now, even in a mixed situation, even in a mixed situation, Paul said, if, if both of y'all were, were lost when y'all got married, and then one of y'all came to Christ, and now you got somebody that doesn't believe, he said, even in that situation, don't leave them. If the unbelieving want to stay, let them stay. Because you being saved and you being a light is an influence in that home. Uh, you bring the presence of the Lord in that home. Not to say that your salvation is going to uh, help them get to heaven, but by you being a testimony, it might lead them to accept Christ for themselves. 
So don't leave. They just might believe. He, uh, in other words, not only give without them begging, but live without them wondering. Live the life without them wondering who you are. Look, you ought to be the sweetest saint in the world. Matter of fact, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 6 said, uh, be like Sarah. If you got a husband that don't believe the word, don't go home and lecture to them. I understand some of y'all. Now, if y'all mate ain't here, the worst thing you can do is get this DVD, go home, pack and preach about you that here, I want you to hear that. That's the worst thing you can do. But you know what you ought to do? Go home, pick up the DVD so you can hear it yourself in the car. But go home, hey, babe, and, and just let them see the love and see Christ in you. And, 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 and Peter said they'll be one without you having to say a word. Satisfy the need in order to succeed. Don't leave. They just might believe. But, but here is another one. Here is another one. And this is my last one. Stop the grief. Do a sigh of relief. Where am I getting that one from? Well, verse 15 says, but if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. Brother and sister is not under bondage in such cases. Now, if they leave you, somebody divorce you, if they don't want you, if they don't want you any longer, if they keep tipping out, let them go. Let them go. You can't force them to stay. You can't beg them to get right. Let them go. That's why I say stop the grief. Look, there are three grounds, three biblical grounds for divorce, I believe. And, and it all starts with A's. And, and um, now you don't have to get a divorce because of these grounds. But, uh, but brothers and sisters, if it's a persistent problem, you need to know what the out is. Here, here they are. Number one is adultery. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32, chapter 19, verse 9, adultery. Somebody keep on going outside the marriage. Adultery. And, and, and now you can forgive somebody. But brothers and sisters, if they keep on with everything that's out there, you just might be a fool to allow them to keep on Adultery is a ground for divorce. Here's another ground. It's getting quiet. That's all right. Here's another ground. Abandonment. And that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. Abandonment. If they leave you, he said, let them go. Stop putting up the fight. Here's the third one. And the first two are explicitly given in Scripture. I believe the third one is implicitly given. It's implied. And that is abuse. In two scriptures, Exodus chapter 21, verse 7 through 11, Deuteronomy 21, verse 10 through 14. Look, you owe your mate a certain amount of respect and marital duties, and when that is not being done, and if there is verbal and, and emotional abuse, the Bible says, teaches us that he has allowed it for the hardness of men's heart. And the reason why I say stop the grief because some folks, when they go through a divorce, when somebody say, I don't want you anymore, <laughs> and you get all sad, and, and you depressed, and, and, and you ain't combing your hair, and, and ain't going back to the gym, and I, I just gave, gave him the best year of, of my life. Stop the grief. Do a sigh of, thank you, Jesus. If God can close one door, brothers and sisters, he knows how to open another door. I serve a God of restoration who says, I can restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten up. And so you ought to thrive without you regretting. Get your hair done. Oh, brothers and sisters, fella, shake some pound you get to the gym and, and you start working out because hey I'm still in this thing God said I didn't call you to be a slave then stop looking like a slave 
Stop dressing like a slave and acting like a slave. God, I've called you to peace. And so it's worth the sacrifice. It's worth the sacrifice. A happy home where you are satisfying the need is worth the sacrifice. Now, it's worth, but it's worth the sacrifice. It's worth the sacrifice. Why, Why do you say it's worth the sacrifice? Well, because number one, your purpose is simplified. When you're in a happy home, brothers and sisters, your purpose in life is simplified. Uh, what, what, what's your purpose? If your husband, if your husband, if your husband, your husband, husband, men, men, raise your hand right quick. Can I tell you what your purpose is? Please, huh? That's your purpose. That's your, that's your whole purpose in life. Please, huh? I'll give you a scripture, verse 33, verse 33. He who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Simple purpose. You don't get any simple than that. When you get up in the morning, you need to be thinking one thing. I got to please her. <laughs> Going throughout the day, I got to please her. Simple purpose. Simple purpose. You know, I, I was cutting my hair all off. And, 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 and my, my barber said, Pastor, somebody said, what, what's going on with Pastor hair? <laughs> I'm glad y'all concerned about my hair. Can I tell y'all what's going on with my hair? Val says she like to see a little up there. I said, Q, let it grow. Let it grow. Because I got a simple purpose. Please, her. We, we got to understand that around the house. We got to understand around the house. Got to understand it. It's perfect understanding. Boy, 23 years, I'm happy. Understand, simple thing. Val, when we're out, let folks think. I'm the man. <laughs> then I'm the next best thing than, than bluebell ice cream. <laughs> Boy, woo, my wife, she stroked my ego. She gets up, stand up on my sermon. Yeah. <laughs> and I already know when I get home, guess what I'm going to have to do? Run that vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Wash some clothes. I put a couple loads in this morning. She said, oh, this room, this room, it's kind of cloud, it's kind of cloud. I've been picking up this way because i got a simple purpose. Please, huh? I throw, you, I throw this scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 5. When a man takes a new wife, he should not go out to war. He should not be charged with any business. He shall be free at home for one year to bring happiness to the wife that he has taken. Look, the record is there, y'all. God called us to please them. To meet their needs. Now, later, is what's, what's your number one purpose for your man? What's your number one purpose? What's your number one purpose? <laughs> well, y'all got in quiet. Let me give y'all the scripture. It's the next verse, verse 34. Verse 34, but she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may... Y'all look at your Bible. Look at the Bible. Verse 34. I want y'all to read this. Brothers want me to make sure y'all read this before I leave. Do y'all see that? It's to do what? Please her husband. Guess what you ought to be doing, ladies? Please him. Guess what you ought to be doing, ladies? Who y'all some quiet? told me 10 o'clock was a tough group. <laughs> Ladies can't even say <laughs> 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 yeah. I know my time is out. I know my time is gone. They flashing, they flashing, they flashing. Look, purpose simplified. It's a real simple purpose when you got a happy marriage, y'all. But not only is it worth the sacrifice because the purpose simplified, it's worth the sacrifice because peace will be magnified. It's worth the sacrifice because peace will be magnified. Y'all stop sweating the small stuff. Some stuff ain't worth fighting about. Every hill is not a hill to die on. Stop going after stuff, bringing up stuff that you know is going to start an argument. 
The Bible says, Romans chapter 14, verse 19, pursue the things which lead for peace and the things that are going to edify before you open your mouth and say something. Is the peace going to be magnified? If peace is not going to be magnified, brothers and sisters, just be quiet. Why? Because it's a, it's a blessing when you got a happy home and peace about. Book of Proverbs says, better to be poor with stale, dry, crusted bread and to have peace than to have all the money in the world. Food all spread and there's confusion and trouble in the house. Is worth the sacrifice because peace would be magnified. When you got peace, you can lay down at night and go to sleep and not worry when you got peace. Good God Almighty. Purpose simplified, peace magnified. Can I give you another reason why it's worth the sacrifice? Passion would be intensified. Can't talk too much about this and too many young folks in the room. But Sarah, 1 Peter chapter 3, she would call in Abraham, my Lord. Girl was getting pregnant, having a baby at 90 years old. That's passion. Woo. Here's my last one reason why it's worth the sacrifice. Because your prayers will be amplified. Here's another reason why it's worth the sacrifice. Your prayers will be amplified. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if we realize it or not. When you're not on one accord with your mate, the Bible says your prayers will not be answered. Read it for yourself. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. When you're not on one accord with your mate, if you ain't listening to them, God ain't listening to you. If you got stuff going with them, you're at odds with God Almighty. And so it's worth the sacrifice. But you got to get up and make the bed up. It's worth the sacrifice. If you have to work hard and then come home and help around the house, it's worth the sacrifice. To do the things that lead to peace is worth the sacrifice because the Lord did it for us. One Friday on Old Record Cross. He said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve, to give my life as a ransom for many. The Bible says, husband, you ought to love your wife as Christ loved the church. He loved her so much until he died and shed his blood. And on that third day, rose with all power in his hand. He felt like it was worth the sacrifice. It's worth the sacrifice. Every day with Jesus get sweeter every day with Valerie get sweeter sweeter seal this message to our heart Lord Jesus for struggling marriages for troubling marriage marriage that have lost their zest lost their way may they satisfy the need in order to succeed and as we look to you God do a new work in all of our lives this we ask in Jesus name Amen